Did you think you know everything about methadone? Here's a little scenario. You are a methadone patient. You go to California methadone clinic, 100 milligrams a day. You've been doing it for two years. You're about to go to the Netherlands for vacation. And on day X, you are in California. You get your 100 milligram dose. The next day, okay, day Y, you're in the Netherlands. You go into a doctor's office. You'd like your dose. Are you going to feel the same? Do you need the same amount, 100 milligrams? Is it going to get you high? Is it going to make you sick? Is it going to not be felt at all by you? Guess what? The methadone in the two countries is actually different molecules. Dr. B, Dr. B360, as you guys know, I've been doing the little thing on methadone, which I've also couched recently in the concept of euphoria. You can go back and see these videos in the last couple of weeks. But what I want to present here today, something that is important, I think a lot of people don't know it, and they should understand it and know what it is that's going on with the methadone that they are using in methadone clinics in North America. Let's get started. Got a few slides up here for you, and hopefully, I think there could have been some better pictures here, but uh, it will do the job. Okay, let's get started. Molecules, molecules in general, in nature, or whether you produce them on an industrial scale, Molecules, uh, they're not flat, okay? Think about it. Molecules are not flat. Let's take a look at here, this uh, methadone molecule that I have here on the left-hand side. This is a two-dimensional picture. I could have put up a better picture, but imagine that this is three-dimensional, right? Uh, going into three dimensions out in space. And imagine that this molecule here is up against the mirror, and you see the opposite of it, okay? One is called R, right? Right-handed, if you will. S, sinister, left-handed, and these are mirror images of each other, but if you took one molecule, put it on top of the other, you could not superimpose them. So technically, these are two different molecules, literally, technically, and actually effectively, okay? Uh, molecules in nature always come usually with a mix of those. And if you made it in a lab and went through the process without going through another process to separate the left-handed and the right-handed ones and isolate them, you're going to get a mix of it. That's called a racemic uh, uh, mixture. Whatever. It's called racemic, right? Uh, so what's interesting is that nature, biology, all of it, always prefers one of these molecules over the other. Whatever the molecule is, okay, not just methadone, it's going to either prefer the right or the S, left-handed one, okay? And uh, some examples, for example, uh, proteins, they're made out of amino acids, okay? These are almost always exclusively made out of the left-handed mirror image. The right-handed is no good, it doesn't work, okay? Nucleic acids, you know, that kind of... Uh, uh, a code for life, okay? Those are made out of sugars, carbohydrates, whatever. Remember, they're always three-dimensional and nucleic acids prefer the right-handed version. Left-handed, they couldn't care less about. Let's go, and this is, again, how nature works, right? Now, when you go to medicine, a couple of examples, I've already told you about, you know, the issue of methadone. In fact, let's start ba backwards. Ibuprofen, only the S in antimer works, okay? Thalidomide, those of you old enough to remember, it was, I don't even know if I was born then, I think I was, but it caused a lot of birth defects in newborns and, you know, was uh, sort of used uh, for sedation for uh, pregnant mothers delivering and so forth, and it caused severe birth defects. Why? One of the enantiomers was good for sedation, the other one ended up causing birth defects. And let's go to methadone. There is only the R, right-handed one, that produces, for the most part, opiate activity. The S one, left-handed one, has a lot more side effects, which you're going to see something interesting here. It's only the R one that's truly active. In fact, two, three times more potent than the S one. So you can see that this handedness, right, this three-dimensional spatial uh, uh, identity of molecules makes them different molecules because you can't superimpose them. 
and it affects the activity of the target site. It's a very critical concept in organic chemistry, industrial chemistry, all of that stuff. Let's go to another one here. Uh, just got three of these. So, you know, uh, with methadone, okay, as I said, it exists in two mirror image molecules. It's only the R, the right-handed one, that is effective for the most uh, part, right? And it's a general generic name as a levomethadone. The S one, the left-handed one, right? That's the one that really contributes heavily to a lot of the side effects and problems with methadone, including uh, what's called prolonged QT syndrome. I go over that in another video. It's a cardiac issue with the electric impulse and activity that could be very dangerous. It could make your heart stop, but it's only the left-handed molecule, the left mirror image that does 90 percent or more of the side effects and contributes to something as dangerous as prolonged QT syndrome. That's a clinical entity. And it, in fact, has very little pain management properties, analgesia, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, what do we use in the United States? In the United States, we mostly use a mixture uh, concoction, right? So when you get that methadone, it's not the R and it's not the S, it's probably a 50-50 and it's called racemic, right? That's what they call it in chemistry, you know, that's when you have the R and the S, right? So let's say half, it's going to be only half of the good stuff, if you will, the potent stuff, okay? And uh, um, it's a 50-50 mixture. Now, in Europe, uh, uh, they actually, a couple of countries, right? I uh, have them here, Austria, Netherlands. Uh, they only use the pure R methadone, okay? And the trade name is polymidone, okay? It's considered much cleaner and smoother and a lot less side effects at the same equivalent doses. And in fact, when you make a transition from the mixture uh, to the only right-handed molecule, you even have to decrease the dose. But in the US and Canada, it's that mixture, okay? Uh, this issue of uh, bioavailability, taste, absorption, uh, uh, you can actually, that's within formulations and brands in the U.S., but also, also the one that's a mixture really causes a lot more variability in absorption, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. It's much more difficult to control relatively than if you had the pure form of right-handed methadone, okay? Uh, what does that come down to? And I wrote some of the clinical <clears throat> issues here, some of the practical issue. Um, so when you have the S enantiomer in there, you know, it has a lot of side effects. It doesn't add very much clinical benefit or value, okay? And there are many clinicians and there are many proponents of this that, you know, they just think, you know, the American, North American methadone sucks, right? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have the same value in their minds as the R only version, which you see in some places in Europe, okay? Uh, but uh, here's the deal. The R, if you want to just get the right-handed methadone, it's a lot more expensive, okay? Uh, also, uh, and, you know, you're talking about, you know, big addiction programs, it would cost a lot of money. I'm not necessarily knocking that at this time. And you might be going, oh, my God, what a scam. Why aren't we just using the R? And I'll get to that. And it's not a blatant, all-out conspiracy to screw you. It's just pure economics with you're going to see. Um, so, uh, uh, uh when you have the racemic and when you have the 
uh, S, left-handed, you have a lot more concern for the prolonged QT issue with the heart. If you had the R, it's much more, it's much less of a concern, right? And that's also important to know. Uh, uh, so, you know, yes, I do think there is a real issue here, right? Uh, and I do think it's valid to make the point that, you know, the North American or the American methadone is kind of crappier and a lot more side effects and less tolerable than the pure R European methadone, which is much more easily tolerated. And certainly you can make the argument that it is safer, right? Whether it causes death with a prolonged QT, which rarely happens nowadays because everybody watches the dose as your doses go up, that risk goes up, you get an EKG and so forth. But there are, you know, other side effects as well. Uh, here, I kind of put a, uh, you, you know, don't worry about the uh, details of some of this. The important ones is, you know, on the right-handed one, this whole thing on the, you know, the R methadone, right? When you have that by itself versus you have the mixture, which we have here in the U.S., which is on the right side, right? Racemic versus the uh, R methadone. Uh, uh, we know that the R is truly the active uh, molecule, right? So if you look at it here, obviously, you know, uh, all of this S for the most part is going to waste. The R is extremely much more potent, obviously. It's the active one, right? Half-lives are about the same. Uh, the prolonged QT, C, uh, QT syndrome and concern for cardiac conduction issues it's very low, actually, with the R, and it's the S that contributes to a higher risk. But they're pretty good at watching for that in American clinics. You know, they get an EKG as they're taking the dose up. Uh, now, th this one is actually uh, an important one. You know, there is at the same dose, if you're at it, you know, the sedation, the kind of zoning out, dizziness, it's much, much uh, less with the R uh, right-handed molecule, which is interesting, right? It's more potent, but you don't get that kind of yuckiness to it. And that often comes with the left-handed molecule, and you don't really get much more uh, pain benefit out of it. You get none, actually, really which is an interesting component of all of this, right? Uh, there's there's a, quite a bit of metabolism differences here. And what you see here, a couple of these uh, uh, 2B6 issues really give us a lot of insight about this sometimes a problem of getting the dose right in an individual and having to draw labs. I think most of that is from the S left-sided molecule, okay? Uh, Similar half-lives, the brands, like I said, you know, you got the levomethadone, that's the generic name, and uh, palamidone uh, is uh, what it's called and uh, uh, in Europe for that. And then uh, it's generic methadone in the U.S., okay? Um, why don't we necessarily move to the molecule that is active and quote-unquote cleaner, and I've showed you some of the uh, data on these differences, you know, because there just isn't strong evidence that the R methadone, right, produces significantly higher retention rates than the mixture of methadone. Certainly, there's got to be some, and, you know, uh, retention should be better if you have a cleaner, smoother molecule with less side effects, but they haven't been able to fully show that strongly to justify the cost. In fact, you know, what the data has shown, uh, uh, you know, when you use one or the other at the equivalent dose, which is actually more when you have the racemic, you have the same degree of withdrawal suppression, craving control, okay? It's just a lot cleaner and more tolerable. And, you know, I argue that this indirectly is going to improve adherence 
for patients. Okay, so uh, you know the direct pharmacological effect of having the correct molecule here, the co correct spatial orientation, uh, it hasn't been shown in the literature and they can use that discussion and argument to justify using the racemic, which is a lot more cheaper, right? But, you know, there is some evidence that, uh, you know, uh, because of the fact that uh, our methadone is much more smooth, much more tolerable, you can have less dropout and much better compliance, I think, okay? Uh, uh, we do know overwhelmingly that the dose is a significant player in retention and staying off of street drugs. Now, put all of this together with the issue of euphoria, I say if we were to address the euphoria component of this, I suspect at least at some small edge, a person is going to have using the R molecule and better compliance and better transitioning to fentanyl. That's not a big component. Overall, what I wanted you to understand is that the methadone you get in North America is different than the methadone in some European countries. What we have is a mixture of the left and right molecule, and only one of those is really effective. The other one's there sort of, for the most part, as a non-player and adds to some of the side effects. And so it's often argued that the one that does work, the molecule that does work, the R molecule, it's, it's a much better and smoother use history and that toler tolerability may contribute to people staying in the program, although retention has never been shown by that change. What has been shown is the fact that retention is dependent on your overall dose. I hope I gave you some more information on methadone medication-assisted treatment in general, and you found this somewhat entertaining, please don't forget, subscribe, like. The subscription really helps me a lot as I'm back on the channel trying to grow it. Leave your comments below. I have a couple more videos around methadone medication-assisted treatment coming up shortly, and see you guys next time. Peace.